Hello again. Zimbabweans are heading to the polls today to cast their votes in the hotly contested by-elections. There are 28 parliamentary and 105 local government council seats up for grabs. For more on this, we're joined by Fadzai Mahere, a spokesperson for Citizens Coalition for Change, and ZANU-PF spokesperson Tafaza Mogwadi. Thank you very much to both our guests uh, for joining us this afternoon. Fadzai, perhaps let me start with you in terms of the sentiment and the tone on the ground for these by-elections uh, today by and large how would you rate them so far so obviously there's a huge appetite uh, by the citizens to cast their votes in all the by-election wards and constituencies uh, a lot of people woke up very early this morning in a number of constituencies throughout the country uh, to go and cast their vote a lot of people are by and large optimistic because they are tired of not having representation in the councils and um, parliamentary seats where by-elections took place. However, uh, there have been concerns that have been raised around the voters' role, where a number of voters are being turned away because their names don't feature on the voters' role, even though they voted at these polling stations in 2018 in the general election. Uh, we also have concerns with uh, Zimbabwe Electoral Commission polling officers taking the name and names and personal details uh, of voters, which is something that's unlawful. Um, the security of the vote and the privacy of the vote is something that's constitutionally protected and in terms of our electoral law. We've, have, we've had incidents uh, of busing of voters in various constituencies, including in Harare East, um, where tonight BT is running, and then Ward 7 as well, where we've got a Zana PF candidate. Uh, we've had incidents such as uh, Mutasa uh, Central, where the headmen have been rounding up voters to say, please come, vote in pairs. This is how you're going to vote, vote for Zana PF. So those electoral irregularities, of course, are of concern to us, and we're putting together a, a report and a dossier, because the purpose of this by-election for the citizens is to ensure uh, that ZEC is prepared and we don't have any electoral malpractice in the general election in 2023. So we really are on our guard as the citizens to defend the vote and to ensure that these malpractices uh, aren't, don't repeat themselves in 2023. We've got polling agents in every single uh, polling station who are keep, keeping a close watch over the, the vote. President Chamisa cast his vote earlier today and the clear message that he sent out is that everyone has to go out to vote today. We have to vote, vote for the triple C, and let's make sure we all play our part as citizens to win the Zimbabwe for change. Mr. Mogwadi speaks for ZANU PF. Um, just hearing what Ms. Mahere is detailing in terms of electoral irregularity, she speaks uh, of a number of people's names not appearing on the voters' roll being turned away at the polling station. Uh, she bemoans the electoral body and their conduct and the bussing in of voters in some regions. Are you aware of this? Uh, thank you very much. I think uh, it is important to clarify that uh, I'm not a ZANPF spokesperson. I'm the National Director of Information and Publicity. I just thought it was important to clarify that. Yes, uh, you know, coming to uh, the by-elections, I must tell you that uh, from ZANPF, uh, so far so good. We are happy with the process and the manner in which it is going. Uh, in fact, I must uh, say that so far, uh, the only concerning reports that we have received thus far uh, activities that have happened in uh, in Mtare, where an MDC CC faction candidate called uh, is it uh, Cross Pamsiam, yes, the candidate from Fazema's party has been uh, terrorizing and threatening, manhandling ZEC officials in a deliberate attempt to amputate the voting process. I must say that uh, Zambia will frown at those undemocratic practices. What is important is that uh, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission is an organization founded on the Constitution of Zimbabwe, and on that basis it executes its mandate without any undue interference from anyone else, be it ZANPF, be it MDC, be it CC, be it even non-government organization. No one has a right to interfere with the processes of an election board. But we know that uh, from what we are hearing from Ms. Fazema here, it has always been their tired template that uh, whenever we are going to elections, they start uh, creating a cocktail of complaints in order to justify impending losses or to justify, you know, their allegation that Zimbabwe elections are rigged. Even notwithstanding, they are aware that this is a democratic process which should just be allowed to proceed as it has been planned. 
So far, you know, as we, from our side, we've seen that the Zimbabwe Election Commission has been able to reach the length and breadth of the party, and in fact, of the country where elections are taking place, including those areas where there are prohibitive uh, roads infrastructure. The Zimbabwe Election Commission has been able to be there to allow voting to commence at the time stipulated. That is a plus for them. We should not just always complain for the sake of complaining in order to justify impending losses or justify fake news narrative that elections are rigged in Zimbabwe. Just yesterday, or the day before yesterday, we saw Zimbabwe election uh, uh, commission officials in Epworth being manhandled by opposition candidates. That is wrong. We don't seek to do that as Zambia, and that is why we allow the processes to proceed according to the dictates of the Constitution and the parameters set by the referee, in this case, the Zimbabwe Election Commission. Uh, Mr. Mugwadi, uh, how do you justify the living conditions of everyday Zimbabweans who are under very much uh, strain? What Ms. Mahere speaks of is something that is not new, right? So. Zimbabwe has a strong allegation of electoral fraud and the growing list of disputed election results since the year 2000. Having covered the general election in 2018, where a lot of Zimbabweans had thought that that would usher a moment of change for them, and to date, they will tell you that it still has not. So outside, you know, the um, party politics, how do you then justify the way people are living on the ground, which will then translate on the polls? Your question involves a lot of things and disputed things that you want to present as facts. Number one, what you say that Zimbabweans live in strain, that is an allegation that always comes from the opposition. You know that uh, they have always been there. Uh, we have seen them here on these platforms uh, spreading fake news narratives that Zimbabwe is in a crisis. They present us as a crisis situation. They present their country as a pariah state. They present their country as a, uh, inhabitable. But of course, just to see them, they are here, they are in this country, they are living well. It is, of course, catches of the, yeah, you know, the significant tries, tries that have been made by the new dispensation. We know that, of course, yes, previously we used to have challenges. But those challenges evaporated a majority of them on the inception of the new dispensation, the new republic, the second republic, with its new way of doing things. Productivity, productivity, and productivity. You know that we used to come to South Africa to buy maize, to buy mill maize. You, need, you used to export a lot of mill and maize to this country. You could, you are a journalist, I know. You could tell me or tell the world, when did that stop or when did you last export maize in Zimbabwe? It is because we've produced maize in, Bamba, in a Bamba harvest that took place last year, catches of the deliberate program of government called Mbuza or Interest, where our, our storage facilities of government have been overwhelmed by so much maize. And no Zimbabwean will die of hunger. Zimbabwe has achieved the food security in its lifetime. We banned the imports of maize and grain last year, although we have relaxed, uh, you know, that banning this year, catches, of course, in fact, owing to poor rains this year. But you know that we have done well. Our country has been characterized by the Bretton Woods institution, who are not uh, so favorable in terms of their commendation of this country, as the fastest growing economy in Southern Africa, with a growth rate of 5.7% just last year. And our export earnings have uh, surpassed 7.9 billion in Zimbabwe. That is happening. It's real a progress that is happening in this country. We are doing our roads. We have created irrigation infrastructure to ensure that we don't rely on natural patterns of rainfall in terms of the production of, uh, of food in this country. All that is happening in the eyes of those that we want to, that we want to present this country as a country where people are suffering, where everyone is hungry, where there is a crisis. That is their narrative. It is false, and you have been sold and done quite so long. And you will see that is the reason why Zanpi have continued to win elections. It is because we do programs and activities that touches and impact on the livelihood of people directly within their communities under the mandate of President Mnangagwa. No one must be left behind. No place must be left behind. And that for progress to happen in this country, Nikayacho, Inovaka, Nevenuai, only Zimbabweans can build our own country, leveraging on our resources. We are doing that under a climate of sanctions that you know exist. And they were called by these people. They were called by Father's party. They were called by Father's colleagues. But we are doing everything that we can in that hotel environment to do and uh, ensure that we achieve a lot for our people.
Now, coming to Mr. Mugwadi, elections. please, let's just yes. allow um, Ms. Mahere to respond uh, to a number of things that you have said. But Ms. Mahere, if you will, please allow me to ask you about an independent Pan-African network, Afrobarometer, having conducted some research in the country. A recent survey done in June suggested that Zimbabweans have become more politically disengaged since the 2018 elections. We spoke earlier on about how voting is progressing uh, today, giving us an update. But from what you saw, uh, do you see that voter apathy will be a problem? So obviously, you know, we did uh, a lot of walking around and taking a look at the polling stations today. Uh, for a by-election, the turnout is actually extremely good um, and higher than the, the typical by-elections we've seen in the past. Uh, I appreciate the Afrobarometer report, but it's also very clear that ever since the formation of the Citizens Coalition for Change in January this year, there has been a re-energizing of the citizenry and the base across the four corners of the country. Uh, President Chamisa has gone to every single province and we've seen a clear re-engagement on the part of the citizens. The incident that Mr. Mugwadi referred to that took place at Mutare is a phenomenon where uh, Mr. Prosper and Tiani was uh, holding the presiding officer to account. The big distinction between this election and the elections of the past, including 2018, is that we've got polling stations stationed at every single polling station. So we're not letting any electoral irregularities go under our watch. The citizens themselves are participating as polling agents because they're ready to defend the vote. And the reason they do that is something that you made reference to earlier. Zimbabweans are suffering. And contrary to what Mr. Mugwadi suggests, the reason for this is we've got 49% extreme poverty in Zimbabwe. And this is according to the World Bank, not our own data, but you know, uh, the data that's being pushed by the, the World Bank and it's the latest figures. And Zimbabweans see this every single day. Teach so incapacitated and they have not been teaching. Uh, the public health sector is on its knees. The doctor's uh, wages are eroding every single day. Civil servants can barely afford the basics transporting themselves to work. The cost of living is rising. We continue to have hyperinflation and an economy that's not conducive to business. We haven't seen any of the, the investment that was uh, spoken of by Mr. Mnangagwa when he campaigned in 2018 or the electoral promises he made, including you know fixing the health sector. Even if you look at the infrastructure, the road network is in a deplorable state. We've got potholes everywhere. You know, If you look at the Harari Nashingo Road, half of it is simply not navigable because they failed completely to carry out their mandate in terms of the Roads Act. So those are the things that are making the citizens come out in their numbers uh, to vote in the polls today because Zimbabweans are hungry for change. And one thing that we're very clear about is that this is a dry run for 2023. And the reason we've urged uh, the citizens to come out in their masses is because we want as many data points as possible as we go towards 2023. This is the appetizer, uh, President Chamisa has said. The main course really is 2023. That's the big win uh, that we're looking forward to. And our the objective is to secure 6 million votes in the presidential election, a two-thirds majority in parliament, and clean sweeps in local authorities. So all this is the groundwork, the important work and heavy lifting that we're doing, uh, pushing especially for electoral reform, a credible voter's role. And we've said to Zek time and again, act constitutionally, act with neutrality, act independently, act lawfully, or be disbanded. That's our clear message uh, to the electoral management body, because you can't have a situation where a citizen wants to exercise their vote, which is guaranteed in Section 67 of the Constitution. They arrive at the polling station and they're told their name is not there. That's completely unjustifiable, illegal, deplorable conduct, and the citizens are just not having it this time around. Thank you very much to both our guests. That's all the time that we could afford. Uh, wishing Zimbabwe a peaceful uh, election and prosperous one. Fazai Mahere as well uh, as uh, the ZANU-PF's Tafadzwa Mukwadi. Thank you very much for your time. Still to